What we found in, in our study was that, in fact, travel after specifically chest surgery, but in, in many surgeries that relate to that, uh, travel home by either ground or by air has, carries the same risk. It's not any riskier to travel by air than by ground in the immediate post-operative period after chest surgery. Uh, and that uh, speaks to a very important question that's often been uh, managed by dogma or uh, urban myth, hospital myth. Uh, this is uh, the first real large study to look at um, the, the potential for risk traveling either by ground or by air. And what we found is that although there's, it's not a zero risk, the risk is low in the immediate post-operative period, and the risk is the same between ground and air. You want to have someone traveling with you as best as possible, and you certainly don't want to be driving in the early post-operative period after a general uh, anesthetic or even sedation. Uh, the, um, the issues of, of uh, specifically relate to individual operations and, uh, and uh, whether a patient is uh, able or, or um, comfortable with lifting their luggage and uh, often we recommend that uh, you know they have someone travel with them or they avail themselves of the services for someone to, to carry their luggage for them or send it on. Um, in general though, travel after surgery can be done if it's well organized and, and, uh, and thought out ahead of time. And in the car, what we tell patients who are traveling home is to stop every hour or so. Usually the rest stops are spaced out about 60 miles apart. And uh, even if it's just to get out of the car and walk around it once or twice in the parking lot, uh, just to keep blood flowing. There's uh, exercises that are in all of the um, airline booklets and uh, that, you can, that your nurses and doctors in the hospital can teach you to pump your calves if you're stuck in the middle seat. Uh, but I would encourage those who are flying home after their surgery to, to uh, try and get an aisle seat so it's easier to get up and walk and to get up and walk. I know it's not terribly encouraged these days uh, for airline safety issues, but I think uh, just walking up and down the aisle once or twice during a, a long flight or once or twice every hour uh, I think is, is useful. Um, it avoids the immobility that can lead to a, a blood clot. But there's a relative uh, dehumidification that occurs in the air, airplane cabin and to keep yourself hydrated. The best is with water uh, uh, because it's not, it, it's, it's hydrating. Some of the uh, other drinks, alcoholic drinks or uh, carbonated beverages can be somewhat less hydrating and you don't get the same uh, benefit it for the volume of uh, fluid you're taking down. But staying hydrated, especially in the air flight, is very important. I think that's generally a, a good idea, especially in the post-operative period. That's why our, the gowns and, uh, and un uncomfortable stuff that we put you in in the hospital are fairly loose. Uh, binding up is not necessarily the best type of situation after surgery, unless specifically ordered by your surgeon. If you're having significant oxygenation problems, on ground, you're probably uh, smart to look into supplemental oxygen because during the air flight you will be uh, in a less oxygenated environment during that temporary period and it's probably good to have supplemental oxygen there.